Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes our star-studded show train. Tonight, the Association of American Railroads presents the well-known musical hit, Sally, starring Dinah Shore, Leon Arrow, and your host, Gordon McRae, with our chorus under the direction of Norman Luboff, and our music arranged and conducted by Carmen Dragon. Yes, tonight, another great musical success is brought to you by the American Railroads, the same railroads that also bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life. And now, here is Gordon McRae. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're looking for a silver lining tonight, and we all expect to find it in the great Jerome Kern musical, Sally. Let's take our Sally. This gal, Sally, was born one December night in the New Amsterdam Theater in New York. The great Ziegfeld brought her to life, and Jerome Kern gave her music to sing. Sally was the musical comedy that made Marilyn Miller immortal and made the great comedian Leon Arrow a household word. But not in quite enough households. (laughs) Well, Leon, we're proud to have you with us in the same role you created that opening night at the New Amsterdam Theater. The Sally of our alley is Dinah Shore. And we don't expect anybody to be surprised if I fall in love with her in the next 45 minutes. So excuse me now while I change my name to Blair Farquhar, a poor, unfortunate guy with only a couple of million bucks in the bank. And let's ring up the curtain on Act One of Sally. Constantine, Grand Duke of Czechoslovakia. That's me. Revolution! Hey, why can't you have your revolutions in the daytime so a man can get some sleep? We have found out about you and Madame Nukarova. No! What did you find out? That you bought her a string of pearls with the taxpayer's money. Oh, is that all? <laughs> For a minute I thought you were going to be a tear loose a scandal. Would you mind taking that bennet out of my ribs? (laughs) You are deposed. You are now a fugitive, an emigre, an exile. A bum. In the night, they may round you and chase you and prod you with bennets with glee. And they cut down in haste all your government waste where the ships have flowed down to the sea. At that time, I didn't know the Grand Duke of Czechoslovakia from a plug nickel. And he didn't know me from a plug kopeck. And none of us who used to hang around the Elm Tree Alley Inn in New York City knew anything about Balkan revolutions. Waiter! Waiter! Yes, sir? You certainly are a bum waiter. No, sir. Just a bum. Would you please clear off these dishes and bring me some lunch? Clear off the dishes. What are you doing? Well, if I don't break them, I have to wash them. And I can't stand washing dishes. Oh, you say, what, what is here? What's going on here? Oh, for goodness, my dishes. Why do you always have to do that, your highness? Shh, go quiet, will you? Quiet. Don't call me my highness. I don't want anybody to know that Duke of Czech Governor is a waiter in a third-class restaurant. A third-class? My, my. What uh, do you mean, uh, sir? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm wrong. That's better. It's fourth-class. Oh, my. <laughs> Your Highness, please. Haven't I always been a loyal subject? Back in Czech Governor, I always saluted when your carriage went by. And I never stuck my tongue out afterwards, either. <laughs> For this, we thank you. Please, Your Highness, as a next subject, I beg you... 
Will you wash the dishes? No, I don't mind being a waiter, but I will not sink to washing dishes. I told you I'm getting a dishwasher. Hey, waiter, Pops, how about my lunch? Oh, Mr. Farquhar, well, I didn't see you sitting there. I sure right away. Waiter, lunch for Mr. Farquhar. Who is he? He should get such service. Mr. Farquhar is the son of Mr. Farquhar. <laughs> well, that, that's reasonable. <laughs> the well-to-do millionaire? Of course, yeah. Come, Your Highness, I help you. And I carry the dishes. Good. Maybe I'll let you wash them, too. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Well, hello. Welcome to the Elm Tree Alley Inn. Are you the proprietor? Oh, not exactly. But uh, won't you sit down? Have lunch with me. Oh, no, I can't. Well, why not? Don't you eat? I'm going to work here. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, it isn't really. I'm just going to be a dishwasher. They, they sent me over from the settlement house. And you don't like washing dishes? Have you ever heard of anybody who did? Well, don't worry. Things are bound to look up. Why, there's a bright side to everything. Even to dishpans? Sure. Oh. Please don't be offended if I preach to you a while. Tears are out of place in eyes that were meant to smile. There's a way to make your very biggest trouble small. Here's the happy secret of it all. Look for the silver lining when e'er a cloud appears in the blue. Remember somewhere the sun is shining And so the right thing to do Is make it shine for you A heart full of joy and gladness Will always banish Sadness and strife So always look for the silver lining And try to find the sunny side of life Gee, I hope you're right. What's your name? Sally. My name's Blair. Is that your last name or your first name? First, Claire Farquhar. Isn't that a mouthful? <laughs> I like it. And I'm going to remember what you told me. As I wash my dishes, I'll be following your plan Till I see the brightness in every pot and pan I am sure your point of view will ease the daily grind So I'll keep repeating in my mind Look for the silver lining When air a cloud appears in the blue Remember somewhere the sun is shining
Thank you, waiter. Hey there. Are you the new dishwasher from the settlement's house? Yes, sir. The dishes are fading. Yes, sir. Wait. Will I see you again, Sally? Maybe. Over the sink. Goodbye. Oh, uh, pardon me, sir, uh, Mr. Farquhar. But will you be at the party your father's giving tonight in honor of the Grand Duke of Czechoslovakia? Not if I can help it. I... Why not? Well, for one thing, I hear the Duke is a stupid bore. I... <laughs> <clears throat> yes, I see what you mean. <clears throat> you want me to bring your dessert now? No, I, I don't think I care for dessert. You're lucky. <laughs> in all that high society, there won't be one girl as pretty as your new dishwasher. Yeah, I didn't notice. Is she beautiful? Beautiful. Why, she's a painting by Titian. She's Juliet, Cinderella. Cinderella, huh? Maybe you'd like to be a Prince Charming. Can you get me the job? Oh, can do what I can. Maybe I'll be the pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is a little silly. I only met the girl a few minutes ago. Well, nobody ever gave Cupid a stopwatch. She is somehow different from the rest. I can't describe her quite. She seems to me just right. She won my heart at sight. It matters not how she is dressed. I want to hold her tight. She is the darling of my heart. And I met her in the alley. And on some future day To her I mean to say Dear little girl I love you, dear little girl Though the dress that you wear Is a poor affair You made me care and I know someday that I mean to tell her All my golden schemes We shall find the world of happiness Where the sun never gleams And then I'll take my Sally Away from the alley To my world Sally away from the alley to my wonderful valley of dreams. The of his heart and he met her got a crush on this dish dishwasher. Well, it kind of feels that way. <laughs> dishwasher. <laughs> well, uh, I guess it kind of feels that way. Well, I've always been allergic to soap suds, but if she's as pretty as you say, <laughs> I'd like to get a little soap in my eye. <laughs> I've never seen so many dirty dishes in my whole life. Oh, well. Remember somewhere the sun is shining And so the right thing to do is make it shine for oh, that's you. Good, that's good, Sally. Oh, yeah, you're the first cheerful dishwasher I ever had in my restaurant. I am? Yeah. 
Well, I'm trying to be popular. Well, I wish you could cheer me up. I'm in terrible trouble, Sally. What's wrong? Well, there's a Mr. Farquhar who comes in here. Oh, I uh, know him. Oh, you do? Oh, yes. Well, his father's having a party tonight, and I promised to arrange the entertainment for him. But the entertainment missed the board. Who was it? A country woman of mine, the Czechoslovenian Nightingale. The which? A wonderful singer, but his name is Madame Nukarova. Oh. She was supposed to arrive today from Czechoslovenia. Her trunks got here, but she didn't. Oh, that's a shame. Pops? Yeah. Let me go and sing at the party. Oh, no, please, Sally, no. They don't want to hear a dishwasher. But, but, oh. but, I, but I wouldn't go as a dishwasher, Pops. Huh? I'd go as Madame, whatever her name is. Would her clothes fit me? Uh, yeah, yes, I think they might. Oh, please, Pops, let me do it, please. I'll get to see Blair again, and I'll sing good. Honest, I will. Oh, but, but suppose something goes wrong, Sally. What, what if they recognize you? Oh, what? but they won't. Huh? I'll put my hair up on top of my head, and I'll wear my false eyelashes. Well, oh, Pops. Uh... It might work out. Excuse me, Sally. I go look for Madame Nukorova's trunk. Oh, gee. Maybe I'll get out of the soap suds yet. Well, so this is the new dishwasher, huh? Let me look at you. Well? Hmm. You're not pretty. Oh? You're beautiful. Ah, uh, thank you. You're cute, too. Oh, six. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> What's your name? Konstantin Alexandrovich Fidel Gregorovich. What's yours? Sally. Sword. I like it. Sally, the thing I hate most in the whole world is doing dishes. But will you let me help you do the dishes? Won't you hate it? Yes, but I want to make myself suffer. Well, you've got yourself a job, mister. Konstantin, here is the towel. We are deeply honored. Gee, with your helping, I'll be through twice as fast. Even faster if I break a few. Here, now you take this platter and make it shine. Sure, Sally. It's funny. But I guess what he said is right. Maybe you can find it, even in the dish pan. And so I look for the silver lining and try to find the sunny side of Before we bring you the second act of tonight's show, the American Railroads would like to bring you a message from a good friend of yours, your postman. He's a, he's a mighty busy man these days, and he's going to be even busier during the next two weeks, delivering all the millions of letters, cards, and packages which add so much to the Christmas season. His boss, the Postmaster General of the United States, has pointed out that this year the mail is running heavier than ever before. In fact, every day during the last several months, the amount of mail has been running as high as the peak day at Christmas time last year. That's why Postmaster General Donaldson said the other day that the only way you can be sure that your gifts will arrive before Christmas is by the immediate mailing of parcels. And with each passing hour, that word immediate gets more and more urgent. Of course, the railroads are interested in this, too. Part of their business, and a mighty important part, especially at Christmas, is to carry more than nine-tenths of all the mail. The railroads have been making advanced preparations, just as the post office department has, to deal with this year's record-breaking holiday mailing. And you can help, too. So, tonight, the railroads add their thanks to those of the post office department and the thanks of your postman for your consideration and your cooperation in getting off right away any of your Christmas mail that hasn't already been sent. We're ready for the second act of Jerome Kern's Sally, starring Dinah Shore, Leon Errol, and your host, Gordon McRae. And here's Gordon as Blair Farquhar to continue the story of Sally. Let's take our Sally away from the alley. 
That night, my father gave the party for the Grand Duke of Czechoslovakia. And when the famous singer, Madame Nukarova, walked in, you could have knocked me over with a Balkan dukedom because she was a dead ringer for Sally. Uh, but when I saw her beautiful gown and pearls, I knew it couldn't be. Madame Nukarova, we are delighted to see you. Oh, charmant, monsieur. Bonsoir, bonsoir, bonsoir. I am Richard Farquhar. Ah, monsieur Farquhar. Bonsoir, bonsoir, bonsoir. <laughs> Your garden. She is charmant, Monsieur Farquhar. Oh, I see you prefer to speak French, Madame Nukarova. Je suis enchanté de faire votre connaissance. Uh, je suis sunk. <laughs> oh, she is so gracious. So charming. Oh. I hope you can spend some time with us, Madame Nukarova. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. You see, I am so busy singing and washing dishes. Washing dishes? What did she say? Uh, washing well, dishes? Oh, 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 yes, we. Uh, uh, oui. You see, I am, how you say, very domestic. Oh, who would think it? And they tell us you are the woman who caused 11 Balkan revolutions. Twelve. But who's counting? Oh. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Such a beautiful flower, and yet such a firebrand. You find our enthusiasm, our confusion is sublime. We've never seen a girl at all like you. I must admit I'm rather unconventional. A type that must appear as ultra new. Your line is slender flower, not from our domestic climb. And orchid that can thrill us with delight. Alas, I'm not a blossom so original. An orchid bloom would not describe me quite. You're nothing tame. You're like a bird in flame. We know your name. You do? Well, all the same. I'm just a wild rose. Not a prim and mild rose. Tame me if you can. I'm a rose to suit any man Some passion flower This is my hour Who get me, no one knows I'm such a wild, wild rose She's just a wild rose Not a prim and mild Shall I lose my heart? Well, who can tell? It's a magic spell. A lovely flower. This is your hour. Who get me? No one knows. I'm such a wild, wild Madame Nukarova? Oh? My name is Farquhar, too. Yes, I know. You do? Oh, I mean, I know who you are. You look an awful lot like a little dishwasher, I know. A dishwasher? Incredible. Yes, yes, I guess it is. Come, walk with me in the garden, and I'll tell you about it. Oh, but we! Oui. I should adore to see your garden. <laughs> Here's the Royal Highness, the Grand Duke of Czechoslovakia. Ah, oh, Your Highness, we've been waiting for you. Yes, I know how you feel. I've been doing some waiting myself. <laughs> you may kiss our hands. Oh, tell us about Czechoslovakia, Your Highness. Yes, tell us about the days when you were a ruling Grand Duke. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, you see, on the banks of the Schnitzer Comiskey... The, the Schnitzer Comiskey? Uh, what is that, Your Highness? That is our famous national river. It's a sort of a small Danube. I'm a duke from a wonderful time. 
and I've had a remarkable time. My people are splendid, but somewhat unique. They like revolutions, at least once a week. On Sunday, you may be the king. Monday, you don't mean a thing. On the banks of the Schnitzel, Kamiski, they're all just as wild as can be. Any time, without reason or rhyme, you may find it far wiser to flee. In the night, they will rouse you, chase you, and prod you as venus like me. If you meet with defeat, they'll cut off your retreat where the schnitzel flows down to the sea. On the banks of the schnitzel, on the fellows are glad they're alive. Pretty girls? Well, we just commandeer them and sell them in bunches of five. And they dress, so to speak, more or less, well, they're simply as sweet as can be. And all the girl needs Small string of beads, you have the schnitzel comiskey. The peaceful comiskey just gurgles its way to the sea. How you must miss Czechoslovenia, your highness. Uh, but there is someone here who can cheer you up. Ah, who? A famous countrywoman of yours. Uh, Madame Nukarova. Cheer me up. Cheer <laughs> Why, Madame Nukarova cost me my dukedom. Oh, how did it happen? The government was too nice to her. Well, what's wrong with that? I was the government. <laughs> I wonder if they've missed us inside. I don't care. You know, it's amazing how much you like that little girl who washes dishes in the restaurant. This, uh... Little girl of yours. She is nice. Oh, she's charming. Uh, uh, just as you are. Merci. Of course, this other girl hasn't had the experiences in life that you've had. Oh, I'm certain she has not, monsieur. After all, I am a woman of the world. She looks like you, but I think you're prettier. Nonsense, monsieur. It is just the moonlight and the starlight. And the beautiful garden. Oh, listen to that lovely bird. It's a whippoorwill. There's a nest of them over there in the willows. Oh, I wish I were a whippoorwill. You know, when I was a little girl, I used to listen to the whippoorwill and dream of living in a garden like this. Whippoorwill. I used to love to hear you call to me. With poor Will, I know he meant the world and all to me. When the sun had gone to rest, I could hear you from your neck. Whippoorwill, you used to whistle tenderly, and when the moon would swing across the branches of the trees above, you would sing your plaintive little melody. Now, though you're no longer here, in my dreams I still can hear Whippoorwill ever calling to me. Yes, that bird certainly has the right idea. Whippoorwill, I used to love to hear you call to me. I know she meant the world and all to me. When the sun had gone to rest, 
I could hear you from your nest. Whippoorwill, you used to whistle tenderly. And when the moon would swing across the branches of the tree, Sing your plaintive little melodies of love. Now though you're no longer near, in my dreams I still can hear with will ever calling to me. We must go back to the party, Mr. Farquhar. It is rude for us to stay out here so long, really. All right, Madam Nukarova. Here she comes. Here comes Madam Nukarova. They'll be meeting face to face for the first time since the scandal. I wonder what she'll say to the Duke. And I wonder what he'll say to her. <clears throat> Madam Nukarova, I presume you've already been presented to the Grand Duke. <gasps> I... Hmm? Oh. Well, this isn't Madam Nukarova. Not Madame Nukarova. Well, then who is it? Why, it's Sally, our pretty little dishwasher. Why? How insulting. Oh, Your Highness, I humbly beg your pardon having a commoner like this at your party. Don't apologize to him, Dad. He's no Grand Duke. He's a waiter. What? Well, you know I could be both. Oh, why, uh, th this is terribly embarrassing. It sure is, Dad. Hadn't you better go, Sally? Don't you want to hear me sing again? Well, people like this don't want to listen to a nobody. Oh, well, that's just fine. As long as you thought I was that notorious woman, you wanted to hear me sing. But now that I'm just an ordinary human being... No, Sally. Don't speak to me. I never want to see you again. Sally. Come on, Your Highness. We've got to get back and finish the dishes. This business of moving the Christmas mail, which we were talking about a while ago, is one of the things which railroads do that gives railroad men the feeling of being an essential part of a system of transportation which has meant so much to the greatness of our nation. Here's what a freight handler in the station at Glenwood Springs, Colorado, George A. Galby is his name, had to say about this system of transportation. And I quote, The system rolls on smoothly, efficiently, the trains wheel by, loaded with merchandise bound for the four corners of the earth, crowded with passengers for all the ends of the world. And I know that I have a part in it. It is a small part, to be sure, for I am no more than one tiny cog in a great and complicated organization. But there is an abiding satisfaction in knowing that my work contributes to keeping the wheels rolling on the rails. End of quote. What Mr. Galby said was in an essay on why I like to work for my railroad, which was today awarded first place in a nationwide contest sponsored by the American Railway Magazine Editors Association. Other national winners in the contest are Ralph H. Sanborn, station agent at Raymond, New Hampshire, and J.B. Corson, chief clerk at Waterloo, Iowa. Their essays were adjudged the best among the several thousand submitted in the local and national competition. All these papers told why men like to do railroad work. There were a lot of reasons, and good reasons, too. A lot of them were tangible, such as good pay, good jobs, security, and the like. And then there was something more. Something, Mr. Galby said, which has to do with intangible things. And then he summed it up in a phrase. It is a proud calling, that of a railroad man. <laughs> Our show train will return in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. And now.
now for Act Three of Sally, starring Dinah Shore, Leon Arrow, and your Railroad Hour host, Gordon McRae. Let's take our Sally away from the alley. Sally of our alley, a beautiful girl, a rare girl. That night at the party, there were a lot of theatrical producers who heard her sing. And one of them gave her a job. You may have heard of him. His name was Flo Ziegfeld. Well, just before Sally's opening night on Broadway, I visited the Elm Tree Alley Inn. The place was silent and deserted. There was a sign on the door, restaurant closed tonight, dishwasher's big break. One of the side doors was open, and I let myself into the darkness. And there was the table where we'd first met, Sally and I. I could almost hear her singing the way she did that first day. I was right, wasn't I, Sally? Tonight on a Broadway stage, you're going to find that silver lining. And nobody's happier about it than I am, except... Except after tonight, everybody in New York is going to be in love with you, too. And I'll just be one of the crowd. But I will look for the silver lining And try sunny side of love. Congratulations, Sally. Great show. It's a hit. Sally, New York is never going to forget tonight. You got them all right on the bottom of your dishpan. Was it all right? Really all right. All right. It was wonderful. Sally, you're a big star. Aren't you happy? I guess I ought to be. But I'm not completely happy, Your Highness. Well, what's the matter? Tell me what's wrong. Well, everybody out the dressing room, quick. Come on, get out of here. I'm going to talk to Sally alone. Scram, if you please. Now, tell me. What's the trouble? He didn't come. Blair? But after the party, you said you never wanted to see him again. Oh, Your Highness, you know when a girl says that, it means she wants to see him twice as much. I... Oh. Then I'll go out and find him for you. If I have to scour New York, if I have to scour the United States, if I have to scour the world. Come on in, Blair. <laughs> first quick scouring job. <laughs> Hello, Sally. Blair. Congratulations on tonight. You know, I... I think every person in every seat in the theater loved you almost as much as I do. You're sure you wouldn't love me more if I were a notorious woman who starts a revolution every Wednesday? Now, Sally, it's you I love. Will you marry me? No. Why not? Oh, every girl's supposed to say no the first time she's asked. Well, what do they say the second time? Why don't you try it and see? All right. Will you marry me, Sally? Mm, maybe... What happens the third time? Go ahead, don't stop now. Try the third time. Sure. Sally, Sally, will you marry me? Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. I know just the place for the wedding. Dear little, dear little church round the corner We'll slip there one day on the slide We don't want to fuss nothing gaudy for us We have quite settled that you and I She's a girl, so there's no use to warn her. He's a boy, and so he doesn't care. In our hearts we shall sing, and the joy bell shall ring at the church round the corner. It's just round the corner, the corner of Madison Square. 
And I'll promise you one thing, Mrs. Farquhar. What's that, Mr. Farquhar? After we're married, I'll always help you do the dishes. A heart full of joy and gladness will always banish sadness and strife. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Gordon McRae giving you a big thank you to Miss Dinah Shore for her performance tonight as Sally, and to Leon Arrow for being the Grand Duke again, just as he was in the original Broadway production. Congratulations to the others in our cast, Sam Hearn, Joe Kearns, and Paul Fries. Music and lyrics for Sally were written by Jerome Kern, Guy Bolton, and Clifford Gray. It was dramatized for the Railroad Hour by Lawrence and Lee. Next week, our show train will arrive on the same tracks... And at the same time, on board will be George Murphy and Martha Tilton to join me in bringing you the White Christmas musical, Holiday Inn. Board. Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. So until next week, goodbye. <laughs> Sally has been presented by special arrangement with the Tams Whitmark Music Library. Gordon McRae will soon be seen in the Warner Brothers picture, Silver Lining. This is Marvin Miller speaking. The Railroad Hour is brought to you each week at this time by 132 railroads of the United States. Each one of them has its own operations and services. Each one competes keenly with others for business. But all of them work together through the Association of American Railroads for the improvement of all railroading and for better service to you. <laughs> Don't forget the show train will be back next week with Holiday Inn. And here's Carmen Dragon and the orchestra to play you one of the hits from that show. <laughs>